Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the proclamation is actually two verses. Uh, the last verse of the epistle reading and the last verse of the gospel reading. Uh, from the epistle reading, As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. And from the gospel reading, Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. In the name of Jesus, dear Christian friends, the theme for the message this morning is keep looking up. The last few weeks have been big weeks for high school athletics in our state. Uh, football playoffs going on and state volleyball was this weekend. If you're a Lutheran High fan, it was a rough week. We, our football team lost on Tuesday and our volleyball team lost in five sets to the eventual state champions. And so we know it's kind of tough. And so one week you can be the hero, next week you can be the GOAT, right? Jordan Westerkamp, uh, you know, two weeks ago, great hero making the catch. Last two weeks he's got fumble fingers and kind of feels a little down about things. And I'm sure coaches everywhere, whenever they have those tough plays that take place, they always say, keep your head up, keep looking up. And that's what our gospel lesson encourages us to do. Disciples are all gawking at this beautiful temple in the big city of Jerusalem, kind of like when country kids go into the city for the first time, see those big buildings and all the lights, right? It's pretty amazing. And Jesus reminds them that their sight line's too low. You look up at those big lights, that's all you see, that's not good. But if you look higher, that's where God's going to be coming back someday. Look to the skies and keep looking up. And that's what our... Uh, uh, intro it for the day talked about Psalm 121 talks about where are you going to look for your help Psalm 121 says I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth where are you looking our perspective is very important if you're looking down you may be a little depressed whether it's after a football game or missing that 30 point buck as some are trying to catch this weekend. Uh, maybe it's uh, because of relationships. Maybe it's because of jobs. Maybe it's because of finances. It's looking down. We're depressed. Our sight lines down. Or maybe it's because we're looking back. We can't see what's ahead of us because we keep looking back at the things we've done wrong and the shame that we have with those things and we're not keeping our focus ahead. We keep looking back. We need to let go of the past and keep looking forward. But sometimes when we look forward, though, we keep our eyes down, and we're looking just at these temporal things, and as Jesus said in the Gospel reading, this is all going to be gone someday. Anything that we have in this world is going to be gone. Not one stone upon the other will be turned up. You can't take any of this with you. We need to look forward. We need to look up. If we look forward, look higher. Look there. But it's hard to do for our eyes, but... We really need to have one eye looking up, right? So Jesus is coming. And we need one eye looking forward so we don't run into walls and posts and those kind of things. So you need to have both eyes. You need to have forward thinking and upward thinking at the same time. We look up to the maker of heaven and earth, our God, our provider, our Savior. In our epistle lesson, St. Paul talks about working hard. Follow his example. He was a hardworking guy. He wasn't a burden on there. He was reminding them. In fact, his command was... Don't hang around with idlers. Don't be idle like them too. You know, keep working hard as even his, our forefathers did. You think about the sod busters that broke up our land and lived in sod houses. Uh, we think about the forefathers that helped build this congregation and this building because of their hard work and sacrifice. Paul commands them to stay away from idlers, to follow example of your leaders and your forefathers and work hard. He didn't command them not to help those in need. He says, if you don't eat, or if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. So I guess I have to do a lot of work uh, to keep up with myself. But, uh, you know, the, the keep uh, working, he didn't give a command not to help people. He still said to help people. In fact, I've been doing a lot of social ministry the last several weeks of families in need right here in our congregation. And angels within our congregation have stepped forward to bless those who are in need. Yeah, we're supposed to help them when they need help. If you work, if you don't work, you don't eat, but we can continue to care for those who are in need. But the other extreme of that is to work too hard. 
become so focused on work and trying to get things this life that we forget about things of faith. We forget about things of family. We lose perspective of heavenly things, those things you can't take with you. See, we've heard from week after week the last several years from the stewardship biblical perspectives is that everything we own is God's. We don't own anything. It all belongs to him. We're just caretakers. And as we heard in the lay presentation, stewardship is not grab your wallet and worry about taking your money. It's a three-pronged chair of time and talent, and yes, treasures too. They're all important because all that we have is God's. The time we have each day, we don't know how many days we have left. But each day we live for God. We live each day for him. If you've ever read our Constitution, and they all should, if you have trouble sleeping, it's a really good thing to read. It'll put you to sleep right away. But that Constitution has some very important things in the purpose of our congregation. And it starts out, to give glory and honor to God. Everything we do in this congregation should give glory and honor to God. Everything we do in our own lives should give glory and honor to God. See, we do some work. We do need to have work for our daily bread, but... Sometimes uh, in, our, in, our, in our epistle lesson, the challenge was that they were somewhere so focused on Jesus coming back that they weren't working. He's going to come back at 11.05, hopefully before the sermon's over. Some people are open, praying. But, you know, he's coming back soon. And they thought it was right away, so they weren't doing any work. Because you know, he's going to be coming back. And so they weren't working. And so that's what St. Paul's encouraged them to do that. They're sitting on a hill waiting for Jesus. We can sometimes be focused that way too. When we all do our part, then God can do great things through us. I know each of you religiously read your guide, and especially that front article about from the pastor. But the article this last time was about our parts. I mean, it's all working together. The body of Christ works better when we all do our part. Our body doesn't work as well when we don't do our parts. We haven't been doing this as a congregation. We haven't all been doing our part. We say we want full-time ministry, but we're not fully committed to being involved. We're not fully committed to using our talents to their fullest. We're not being fully committed by growing in our giving. It all starts with our faith because of what Jesus has done for us. He died for me. I'll live for him. And then in response, I'll use my time and my talent and my treasures. Because we want to honor God and give him all the glory, we balance faith and family, work and recreation, being recreated by not doing work. So we do it all to the honor and glory of God. One of the things that I enjoy about uh, a member of the Optimist Club, and at the end of our meetings, we always have a creed by what we want to live by. And when there's many good things in that creed, and one that stands out to me all the time is, we should be focused, so focused on proving ourselves that we don't have time to criticize others. And it's really interesting, isn't it, in the epistle lesson? I didn't know it was in the Bible that talks about busybodies. You know, it's right there. You know, there's people being busy, but they're being busybodies instead of being about their work and encouraging. In fact, if we we're all taking care of our part, doing our part, we wouldn't have time to criticize those and, well, they should be doing this and they should be doing that and they should do this better. We should focus on improving ourselves. Grow in using our time in service. Grow in using our talents where they are needed. We all have been given talents. Nobody here has been left out. You have at least one. You may have to search for it and look for it, but we all have been given at least one talent by God. Some may even be even more. Maybe you have a special gift of playing the organ or singing. Maybe you have a woodworking, or maybe you have certain skills with math that can be used in service to God, but they can all be used. Grow in using our talents where they're needed. And also grow in using our resources. One of the things I make sure I don't do, and I think I've shared this with you before, is I don't look at what people give. I know I'm a sinful human being, and if I did that, I'd probably act differently. And so I work under the assumption that we all need to improve on our giving. You know, if I knew people, if I thought someone should give more, I'd probably treat them differently. If I thought they were giving a lot, I'd probably treat them differently too. But we all need to grow in our giving, including myself. And I need to grow in all those areas of how I use my time, how I use my talents. We can all improve. One thing I hear over and over again over the years is how we're a blue-collar congregation, and it's just kind of tough for us to get going. 
Demographically, right here in this neighborhood where this church sits, the average combined household income is $60,000. They know that. They, they, they can figure out that out. But yet we don't have more than a handful of people that give more than $6,000 annually that would tithe what they make as a household income. That's a challenge. We're not a poor congregation. We are poor in our giving. So we need to work on improving ourselves. Then we can't criticize others. Not one person is going to fix our situation. If you look at our budget, our mission ministry action plan that was proposed last Thursday at church council, it's roughly about $54,000 deficit we're proposing. About $1,000 a week. I don't expect one person here in this congregation to make up that $1,000 every week. But you know, we have at least 100 giving units every weekend. And if every giving unit gave $10 more each week, we'd make up that $1,000 in a hurry. It's possible. We are not a poor congregation. Work on improving ourselves. Each of us doing our part will. Because our theme of our stewardship theme is we're blessed by God to be a blessing. We are all blessed. We're all blessed in different ways. And as God blesses us, we respond to him. Now we use our time and our talents and our treasury. One of the important questions that's being asked, it was asked at the elders meeting, at the church council meeting, will be asked on December 15th. Do we want full-time ministry here at Mount Olive? We have two options. We increase our giving to match what we want to do in ministry. Then we can continue to do full-time ministry. Or we can decrease the ministry to match our income and be doing less than full-time ministry. When we give as God has blessed us, when we each do our part, then we can do more ministry than we ever thought possible. That's an act of faith. That's an act of trusting God. Well, I give him everything I have because he died for me, I'll live for him. And there's not a part of my life God can't have. I give it all to him. We can do more. Think about the possibilities. That we even gave 5% as a congregation on average. Think about the wonderful blessings of ministry we could do. The dreams we could have of having a daycare, having additional staff, having more care in our community for people in need. If the ministry of Mount Olive matters, please be at our voters meeting on December 15th. We'll discuss our ministry action plan, our budget, and how we want to do ministry in the future. There's no doubt that life is hard. There are challenges and disappointments. There always will be. There always have been. And guess what? Every time we've had those challenges in the past, God has more than met them. He's been there for us. He's taken care of us, and he won't let us down now. How will we respond? It's tempting to put our heads in the sand, pretend we'll just keep on going the way we have in the past. We've seen that line item in the, in the bulletin and the guide for years that we're not making it financially. And let's continue to do that eventually until money runs out. That's one way. We can't keep on going like that, though. The way to move forward is to keep looking up. When we look at Jesus, when we act in faith, then God can do great things. When our focus is on Jesus, we can make sacrifices like he did. And when we respond in faith, knowing that all we have, our time, our talents, and our treasure are God's, then God will do great things through us. And the encouragement from the epistle reading, don't give up. Don't grow weary in doing good. Keep doing the good you're doing. And keep growing in your faith. But continue to do everything to the honor and glory of God. Amen.